I do miss Myron, um, but I start with an idea. Then I say, who's going to tell the story? If the idea will work for Myron, he'll tell the story. But if it's not going to work for him, I don't want to force it. So it's hard to find a plot that's going to work anymore exactly for him. So for Promise Me, it was six years since I wrote him. It'd probably be another two or three years again before I write him. But he will come back. There's more stories for him to tell. You know, sometimes I give very complicated answers, but uh, the name Myron Bolotar just popped in my head. I, I don't really know where it came from. But when I created Myron Bolotar, and a lot of writers don't like to ad admit this, but I wanted him to sort of be me, but with wish fulfillment. I played college basketball, but I wasn't nearly as good as Myron. I'm big, Myron's a little bigger. Uh, I'm, he's stronger, he's funnier, because he thinks of the line that I wish I had said. He's a probably better friend, uh, he's more loyal. What I didn't realize when I created Myron was I gave us a wonderful tension that works well in the books. And that is Myron has what I want in life, and I have what Myron wants in life. Myron's dream is to get married and live in the suburbs and have kids and that sort of life that I have, and I, I can't let him have that. On the other hand, I lost my parents at a young age. He still has his parents, and he has a really warm, wonderful relationship with them. So I'm jealous of that. And as time has gone on, as Myron Bolotar goes through things that I will never go through, we've ended up, instead of being an alter ego, he's ended up being a friend and someone I know well. We're pretty different now. We didn't start off so different, but now we're pretty different.